as a modular designer. Have a mind that likes to see and figure out how things go together. You can start off as an apprentice and before you know it, if you work hard, you can get up to the top position if you want. The opportunity is there. For qualifications, having set qualifications in AutoCAD are never going to do you any harm. They can be very, very beneficial. But with regards to meta skills, you have to be able to use your own initiative as well. And if you come across a problem that you see in the design, try and find the solution before you take it to your project manager. An ideal person would be someone who enjoy getting into the nitty gritty details of something. I'm Christina Carl, and this is how you become a modular designer. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm talking about. Primarily, my role is to do the design and drafting for the modules, ranging from the architectural drawings, doing the electrical drawings, onto the structural. When the project manager receives the spec, it then comes to myself with a discussion with the project manager to create the drawings. They get sent to the client for approval. Then I create the structural drawings to then send to the fabricator, it lays with the electrical engineer to create the electrical drawings to also get sent to the client. And then after that stage has passed, and the cabin has been fabricated, you then have to go to the fabricators and you look and check all the drawings to make sure everything is as per what's been issued to the fabricator. You make sure that everything ties in and essentially you're doing a survey of the cabin once it's been complete, just to make sure nothing's wrong, everything's in place and it's ready to go and get painted. Once it goes to the painters, you have to send a paint drawing to them, which is a general arrangement of the outside of the cabin, so they know exactly what they're doing there. When the cabin comes back to the workshop painted, I go downstairs and check that the paint has been done as per the spec and that there's no lumps or bumps. Then when the cabin has been outfitted, I take down the architectural drawings that were issued to the workshop and check them against what has been built and make sure that everything is as per that's been client approved. My favourite part of the job is the designing. I love it when I mean, you do get jobs where the repeats. The client has had a product before, wants another one, it's easy enough, the drawing's on the system, you just fire it through. But when you have a new build, you're properly having to think about the layout, how everything's going to go together. Then when the layout's approved, you get to create all your structural drawings. And because you're having to actually think about how everything goes together, you have to really use your mind and like tap into your technical skill set and figure out how is this going to get built? What's the fabricator going to do? What's the process they're going to go through? And see when you draw on paper and think that's going to work, I'm sure it is. But you always second guess yourself a little bit, but then you go to the fabricators and you're like, that worked. It actually worked. And you have a bit of pride in yourself, seeing something that you've drawn, try to figure out when it actually works, seeing it, it come to fruition, it's pretty cool. Regarding the skills required for the role, primarily the first one would have to be your ability to use AutoCAD. Second one, I would say you have to be able to communicate well, especially with your project engineers, your electrical engineer, your fabrication guys. You have to be able to speak to them, go to them um, if you have any questions because it's the drawings you're doing for them that you're creating. You're creating drawings for them for each of their discipline. So you are almost the middle guy between the engineers and the thing being built. So it's your job to be able to communicate effectively with everyone who you're dealing with. So with regards to meta skills, one of the biggest ones I would say would be the collaborating one because it's not just one discipline that you're dealing with. When you're creating the plan, you don't just create one drawing at a time. You have to think, how does this relate to the elevations? Okay, then how is that going to relate to the structural drawings? And then, okay, so this is how it laid out. How are the electrical routes going to run? You have to really think about how everything is going together in the big picture, not just focusing on one thing at a time. So it is very much so, yeah, layered in that way that it's not one track minded. You have to really think about everything at once. For qualifications, it's a bit funny because some people say as a ticky box, you need to go to university. And that's what I did but there's people in the office who have a very similar role to me who didn't. They worked their way up through the business. They started off as a draftsman and have now lead architectural draftsman within the company. For myself, I went to university. I didn't 
You tend to think people who do drafting and designing in offshore are all engineering based, but I'm architectural. I went to university and did my master's in architecture and it was in my placement year at uni, I was looking for a job in an architect's office when I saw an advertisement for a project engineer. So I thought, try my hand, I applied for it and I got it. And then when I got the job, there was a, someone had left for the drafting for the modular sides and just per happenstance, I guess, they pulled me to work in there until they got a replacement. I realized I loved it, they liked my work and I've just, stayed. I've never moved. Um, so I came in as a trainee project engineer and now I'm a designer and I'm happy with that because I come from a designing background and I didn't expect to be in that role um, just because I always thought you needed an engineering degree to be in this industry but you don't. Oblanes is a good company to work for. It's as you get older we appreciate that you're seen more as a person and not a number in a company. And at Global ENC, I definitely feel like I've, I'm seen as a person. Everyone's got their own stuff going on, but any issues that have arisen, you go to your manager there and you're actually seen, you're heard, and they're so compassionate. I've had a situation when my dad was ill through COVID and really ill, and the company was just incredible at helping me through that. And I've had job offers since then from different places, but I wouldn't jump anywhere else because they've gained my loyalty through being there um, for me when I needed it. Mm -hmm.